Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at the very special case of cutting lines and shapes that have gradient fills. So I have a document here that has a series of lines. These are just paths and they have a gradient along them. And these are shapes and they're all filled with a gradient. They don't have any stroke around them. So we're going to have a look at firstly the kind of tools that we can use to cut these lines. So let me just go and select on this line. Now I can try the scissors tool and that would cut a point on the line. You can choose any point, it doesn't have to be an anchor but you can just click here to cut the line. But as you see it's not working because what we've got is two individual shapes then to which the gradient has been applied. So I'm just going to undo that. Let's try another tool. Well, there's the knife tool that we could try. Now that's simply not going to work on a line. A knife tool doesn't work on line, so we can't use that. Let's go back and select the line and let's try the third possible tool, which is the eraser tool. So I have an eraser here. If I just double click on the eraser, you'll see that I have a nine point circular eraser. So I'm just gonna click OK. And I'm just going to draw through the line with the eraser. Well, again, like the knife tool, we get two individual pieces. They've both got the exact same gradient applied to them, but it doesn't look anything like a cut through the original line that we had. And also we've got this really big space where we erase the line. So let's just go and undo that. We'll have a look at the same tools with the boxes here. So I have my box selected. We can try the scissors tool. Well with the scissors tool we'd need to cut two sides so we need to make a cut through this. So let me just cut once there and once over here. And yes I do get potentially two shapes. You can see them here in the layers panel but we don't have the gradient seamlessly across the final shape because each of these pieces has had the gradient applied to them. Let's undo that. Let's try the knife tool. Now the knife tool obviously cuts the shape, but again we've got the exact same problem. The gradient isn't seamless, it's not being retained. Let me undo that and let's try the eraser tool. So again, let's see how that's going to work. Well, here is part of the solution. The solution here is that the eraser tool does work. It works where the other tools don't. But we still have this really big space where we made the cut. So let me just undo that and let's see if we can solve that problem. Again, I'm going to double click on the eraser tool and you can see that it has a size of nine points. Well, I'm going to take it down so it has zero points in size. In other words, we won't even be able to see it as it cuts. But let me go and make a cut through this selected shape again. Well this time I do have two pieces and I do have a gradient across the two pieces that is seamless. So when we put the pieces back together, firstly they fit without any spacing between them and secondly the gradient is seamless. So we haven't destroyed our gradient in the process. So the short answer to this question at one level is that if you want to be able to make a cut through a gradient filled shape, you're better to use the eraser tool on it. Now if the eraser tool doesn't suit you, then that's going to beg another question which we're going to solve. But of course we also have the problem of not being able to split this line with the eraser tool because we're losing our gradient. So let's go back and solve the line problem and then the box problem. So with my line what I'm going to do is expand it. So I'm selecting over my line, I'm going to object and then expand. I'll just click OK and over here in the layers panel you'll see that I have a path that is a filled shape. So it's no longer this line that has a number of anchor points along it and just has a stroke. This time it's a filled shape. So it's just like a box with a curve on it. And so now if we go to the eraser tool, we'll be able to cut through this shape. And again, we're going to get this seamless transition. We'll just have to be aware that we're working within a group and that if we want to separate these, we're going to need to select the individual path to move it. So now that we've worked out that we can use an eraser on a line, but only if we expand the line, let's go back to these box shapes and say, okay, we don't want to use the eraser, then what are we going to do? 
Well, we could expand this shape. Any shape that has a gradient in it can be further expanded. Now, there are a couple of expansion options we're going to look at. Object Expand. Now, the one we're not going to use is this one because this allows me to expand the fill into 50 individual objects. I'm just going to click OK and let's have a look and see what we've got. Well, we've got a clipping group here and we've got 50 individual bands of colour and you can actually see in the image here the actual bands of colour. So let me just go and get the group selection tool, click away from the object and then start clicking on these and here are each of the individual bands of colour. So instead of a shape that has a gradient in it, we've got 50 small pieces, each with a solid colour fill and then we have a clipping path over the top of it, a rectangle here that is just managing, if you like, the shape. So that's probably not the best way of doing it because you do get this sort of very pixelated look to your shape. So let's try the other way of expanding the path. Let me just make a duplicate of this so that we can have our original there to compare everything against. So let me select this shape and go to Object Expand and this time we're going to choose the Gradient Mesh option. So what's going to happen is that this is going to be converted to a clipping path as well as a Gradient Mesh. Let me click OK. Let's turn this one off for now so we can just focus on what we've got here. So we've got a rectangle here that is holding everything together and we've got a mesh shape. So if this rectangle is the actual shape and the mesh is the contents, then we could potentially cut the rectangle and end up with a different shape mesh. Now the way we're going to do that is we're going to select just this rectangle that is in this clipping group and we're going to copy it with Edit Copy and then we're going to paste it back in using Edit Paste in Place. So Paste in Place is going to put it back at the top of everything but exactly over where it came from. So right now let me just turn off this entire clipping group and let's focus on the duplicate that we've got of that rectangle and for convenience just so we can see what's going on, we could actually fill it with a colour. So this is the shape that I want to cut and use that to control this gradient mesh. So I could go through with anything that is a shape cutting tool. So for example, I can use my knife tool. Now my knife tool has cut this pink shape in two. You can see the two pieces here. I'm going to delete one of them. So I'm going to say I don't want this piece but I do want this piece. And what I want is for this piece to look like this in terms of the gradient. So let's have a look and see where we are. Here is where everything is working. I'm actually going to drag this up to the very top so that we can sort of focus on it here in the layers palette. So we've got our group. Inside that is a clipping group, inside that is the rectangle that's holding the shape and then the mesh. Well we want to get rid of this rectangle so I'm just going to click on it and just press delete. And I'm going to drag this path that is going to be our new clip into this group. So we've got the clipping path here and the mesh and all we have to do is actually use it as a clip. So we have to turn this into a clipping group. So we're going to select on the group, make sure nothing else is selected. This is really critical. This is where you're going to make the mistake. Make sure nothing is selected when you do it but you've just targeted this group. Go to the flyout menu and choose make clipping mask. And what that does is it turns that shape into a clipping mask for the rest of it. And you can see here we've got our shape. We've got the shape that we chose to make filled with the gradient. And this is seamless. When we drag it over the top of here, you can see that we can't see a lot of difference. I can see marginal difference, but it's really not so much that it's going to affect you terribly. Now you could do the same with your lines. So we're going to go to this line. We're going to expand it. Now the first expansion is only going to turn it into a path that has a fill on it rather than a line that has a stroke on it. So we're going to double expand it if you like to get our fill with the gradient mesh. And we're going to end up with exactly the same here as we had down here. So we've got a group. Here's our group. 
here's our clipping path this time it's a sort of snaky shape and here is the mesh so I'm going to target just this clipping mask so only it is selected I'm going to choose edit copy and then edit paste in place and that will put my shape again up the very top of the document now I'm going to turn this off for now so I can't see it and let's just focus on this path let's fill it with a color so we can see what we're doing and I'm going to use my knife tool and I'm going to cut it the way I want it to be cut the knife tool has a sort of smoothing effect so it does allow you to get possibly better results than you get using the eraser tool let's go and select the first path and here is the second path well I want to get rid of the second path so I'll just select it and delete it so this is the clipping path that I want to use here it is in the layers palette and here is where we're heading to so I'm just going to drag it all the way down into this group and let's turn the group back on so here is our clipping path the one that is hollow that we no longer want so I'm just going to select and delete it and when I do you can see that because of the clipping path is no longer there we're seeing that entire mesh but that's just fine because we've got the path that we're going to replace it with I'm going to drag that down in here retarget the group but making sure that nothing is selected go to the fly out menu and choose make clipping mask and now we've got again a clipping mask over a mesh so the mesh is really quite large the clipping mask is just controlling what we're seeing and again this is going to be pretty pretty close to our original shape if I just try and get these two on top of each other you can't see where the cut is but there definitely is a cut there and it's been made using the knife tool but when we use the knife tool we have to do that double process so we'll have to expand it to a gradient mesh with a clipping path and then adjust the clipping path and replace it if you're happy with using the eraser tool and make sure that obviously if you need to that you set the eraser tool to a size of zero then you can just cut it with the eraser tool but you might find that you get more control perhaps with the knife tool and if you want to use the knife tool then you're going to be needing to use that gradient mesh option if you're happy with using the eraser then you can just go and erase over a shape that is an expanded shape so that it is a filled shape not one that has a stroke on it so I hope that this has helped you it's certainly an indication as to why it's important to keep an eye on the layers palette and to understand what's going on so I would strongly suggest that if you're newish to Illustrator that you have the layers palette open as you're doing this and just be curious about what you're seeing because that allows you a lot of control once you understand what is going on over the elements in your document if you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results then you'll love my Skillshare content I'm a Skillshare top teacher I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses all for the price of a single subscription if you're interested there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.